Thank you very much, Marcia. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was Marcia mentioned the word perception. Someone's perception is also their reality. All right? You need to understand what their perception is. Overcome any objections they may have to the HR function, to you, to any of your team members. Because until you understand what it is that's standing in your way, you're never going to be able to advance the way we're all proposing that we can and should be doing. So right now, um, I'd like to open it up to Q&A. Um, we all know that Mark is ready. <laughs> I'm, sure Mar uh, I'm sure Marcia and Diana are as well. So is there anyone that would like to start us off? And um, when you raise your hand, please just state your name and your affiliation. Roy. Roy, can you stand up, please? This is Roy Cohn, one of the master coaches from Five O'Clock Club. I usually start with, I'm sorry for the questions. Um, uh, you've all uh, made some great recommendations on how the HR community can uh, rebrand itself to become more strategic or be viewed as more strategic as a partner to uh, the business. Uh, in light of what's happening in organizations and the economy now and pressure to be tactical, uh, uh, how do you recommend that uh, we prioritize these recommendations? Okay, and is there anyone in particular you'd like to address that question to? Prioritizing the recommendations that you set forth today. So perhaps, um, uh, Diana, would you like to take a start and we work down the panel? Of course. I think the answer to that is easy. You start with the business. Exactly what is going on with your business within the context of the industry, within the context of the larger economy? What are some of the immediate challenges that are being faced? What are some of the medium-term and longer-term challenges being faced? And it flows right from there what the priorities should be for the company as well as more specifically for the HR function. I would second that. And I would just get even more specific. Uh, I would prioritize on figuring out how can you relate the business activities to the profitability of the whole company. I mean, very specifically, how does that work? Uh, the one of the HR we're talking about, you know, does the HR manager get, uh, you know, part of the is he, is, is is he or she part of the executive team? Is uh, are they being talking to the board of directors? Uh, one HR manager that that I worked with called me in one time and said, you know, I'm not sure we should really be building this warehouse because I think it's going to hurt our return on capital, and I'm not sure if the bonus plan is rewarding or penalizing that appropriately. How many HR executives speak in that language? In my experience, precious few. So this is a person who not only knew the business well enough to be able to come up with that possible objection, that, that, that possible problem in the incentive plan, but who, uh, but who proactively brought me in to help him deal with that, and he's talking to his senior executives about that. So I say learn the language of value creation, figure out very specifically how the activities of your business units are relating to the value creation of that company. I, I agree, but I, th I think the very first thing that all of us can do is to take a self-assessment. We need to decide right now if we're up to the challenge, because it is a challenge. If you know that there is something that you don't know, Decide whether you're up to the challenge, learning it now. And that starts from the time you walk out the door. That's something you can do immediately. In that assessment, you should be thinking about the language that you talked about. Do you really understand the business? If not, start immediately. And that means having some conversations some serious conversations with people who are in the industry. Yes, you have to do the research, and I know you're busy, and you're going to go back to your offices, and life gets in the way. However, that has to become a priority. Put it on your list. You know, put it on your calendar, and start learning what you don't know about yourself, what you don't know about the business, and who map out your network within the organization and outside of the organization. Who are you going to network with? Who are you going to reconnect with? Tina mentioned reconnecting with people who you don't know. 
who can you do that with? And if you're not talking to someone who you haven't spoken to in a while every week, you are missing the boat. So this is, these are things you can do right away, beginning today. Another thing I would point out just from my own personal experience is networking with other HR people in your own industry. There are a lot of industry associations out there. Find out if the HR people get together once a year. Um, we did, and we got in speakers from the industry. We learned a tremendous amount. We brainstormed with one another. So, yes, I agree with net networking outside of HR, but also network HR within your own industry, and that can help you as well. Okay. Next question. Yes, name and organization, please. So the question is what sort of education one can do to further enhance Okay. Uh, any of you professor? <laughs> well you could take my corporate governance class at NYU. <laughs> You know, I'm probably not the best person to answer this question. I actually studied art and architecture as an undergraduate. <laughs> and all of my experience in human resources has been on the job learning. I think that in addition to all of the, the, the ways that we've talked about today about, you know, enhancing our effectiveness as, as HR is that I think that HR people have to read more about business. I mean, and that's probably very related to what Mark has been talking about, about learning the language of value creation. But I, I must say that when I talk to many other HR people, I don't know if they're literally reading the Wall Street Journal every day. And I think that they should. Um, so that's something that I would definitely recommend to people. You have to be up on what's going on in the world and the economy. Um, and it really, I think, of course, not only adds to your knowledge, but also to your effectiveness in terms of being a business partner to your CEO or other senior person. And I, I would, oh, go ahead. I was, I was just going to agree and also say that there are a lot of mini courses that you can take that will help you as well. And those are, you know, finance for the non-financial manager. And, and you need to learn to speak the language. So if you know HR, yes, it's nice to go back for another degree or to put some letters behind your name. But if you only know HR, chances are you're going to become obsolete. So you know if, if that fits into how you are now and what you need to do to change. Thank you. Next question. There's some in the back. Oh, okay, yes, go ahead. I just wanted to comment that, oh, sorry, Pauline Alexander, United Nations Federal Credit Union. I just wanted to comment that one thing I find very useful is also speaking to the heads of your business unit because um, they're very helpful in trying to sit with them for a little while and just chat about their, their, their areas. I mean, they, like my finance guy and the CIO will talk really willingly about finance and specifically how it relates to our company. He gives a lot of background, he's able to help. So I found that actually connecting with the heads of the business is a really good education course for yourself as well as to know about your business as well. Thank you very much, yes, sharing information. What I also did was I did lunch and learn brown bags where I had different people from different areas of the organization speak to the whole company. Um, it was for the company's benefit, but I learned a lot as well. And we often have employees come to us with their problems. How often do we stop and ask them, well, what is it that you're working on? You know, we can find out a lot that way as well. And I also think that actually sitting with your salespeople because they're used to talking about your company, 